Hey, it's me, Steve. And um, I'm going to show you why we use vertical exaggeration on some geologic cross sections and cross sections in general. Um, the circumference of the Earth is massive, especially compared to a human being. All right. So, I mean, and even the deepest and the deepest places on Earth and the highest mountain peaks are really insignificant compared to the entire Earth in and of itself. The, deep, the deepest place on Earth is at the Challenger Deep. It's about, well, essentially 11 kilometers below sea level. All right? So, um, the highest point above sea level, and I know people debate this, but whatever. The point is, at this scale, it's minuscule. But it's Mount Everest, and it's about 8.85 kilometers above mean sea level. All right, and here's a, just a diagram to show you that compared with the Marinera Trench, which is where the Challenger Deep is located. All right, the diameter of the Earth at the equator is about 12,756.28 kilometers. All right, and here just shows you the equatorial and the polar, uh, you know, diameters, but. The average is that 12,756.28, all right? All right, so if we take the highest and lowest elevations on the surface of the Earth and add them together, we get about 20 kilometers. Why am I using a positive number for the value below sea level? Because obviously, if you're going below sea level, the Challenger Deep, why am I not using a negative number? Well, this is why. Because if your baseline here is zero, which in this case would be sea level, and you have something positive and negative, this would be your, the baseline would be your y-axis. The horizontal line with the balls on them would be your uh, x-axis. Because when you're doing distances, the negative numbers don't matter. I mean, if you add, like in this case, the red ball is 5 meters from the baseline. The uh, yellow ball is 3 meters from the baseline. Um, so they're both positive numbers from the baseline, all right? So if minus 5 meters plus 3 meters, uh, they're not negative 2 meters away from each other. You can't have a negative distance between two objects, all right? That just doesn't work. So you just use the positive numbers. So you get your 8, me uh, eight meters in this case. You just reset your baseline, essentially, is what you're doing. Okay, so that's why I added the two numbers and didn't subtract anything. So the distance between the highest and lowest points on Earth compared to the diameter of the Earth at the equator is very, very small. And I'm going to graphically show you this, okay? Like, really small. Say this bar represents the diameter of the Earth, all right? And say the left side is a North Pole, uh, the bottom side is the South Pole. We'll just say that. Now, I'm going to put... That distance between the highest and lowest points on Earth, I'm going to put it at the edge of the North Pole and show you how far, how close it gets to the South Pole. And any guesses on how far it is? It's that far. All right, that's the difference between the highest and lowest points on Earth to scale compared to the diameter of the Earth. It's really, really small. And remember, I said that that uh, the difference between the two is 20 kilometers. So you're looking at 0.157% the diameter of the Earth between the highest and lowest places on the surface. If And to put this another way, if you were six foot tall and the difference between the highest and lowest points on the Earth would be, so to scale to you being six feet tall, would be equivalent to just over one-tenth of an inch of your height. All right? So one-tenth of an inch compared to your six-foot tall is not significant. I mean, it's like if you grow your fingernails long and then peel one off. I mean, it's, it's not a significant difference. And you can look at it another way. An American football field is 100 yards long. The dif distance between the and 100 yards is uh, 300 feet, which is very roughly equivalent to 100 meters for you uh, metric people, but it's actually not 100 meters, but, you know, whatever. The, dif the difference between the highest and lowest points on Earth would be equivalent to just less than five and two-thirds inches the length of the football field. 
all right? So you're talking about a football field that's 300 feet long, and the, dis the difference between the highest and lowest points on Earth wouldn't even be 6 inches of that 300 feet, all right? So as you can see, those distances the, the, between the highest and lowest points on Earth compared to the entire Earth are extremely small. Why does any of this matter, and what does this have to do with geologic mapping and vertical exaggeration? All right. So here's the Earth from 400 kilometers above the surface taken from the ISS. There's my source, NASA. You can see how it curves, but the curve isn't even that big, even at that height in orbit, all right? It's very small, and, and you're 400 kilometers up there, okay? Now, the reason why is because I don't think people understand vertical exaggeration, and to, in their defense, a lot of times you'll see photos from space where the vertical exaggeration has been increased and then they don't tell you that what the vertical exaggeration is on a lot of these photos. Or you got to go dig for it. This is a very popular one from Venus. This is, it's a digital render, rendering of the Venusian surface, specifically Matt Mons. And it's exaggerated 22 and a half times. That means... The height of that, and this image, entire image, the height is 22.5 times higher than the width of this photograph. That's the vertical exaggeration. Well, what if we get rid of that 22.5 times? That's what we get. There's barely, you can't even really notice any... Uh, any actual elevation changes with your naked eye. That's why in a lot of these space photos you'll see in the digital renderings why they exaggerate vertical topography. It's so you can see details you can't see if it's just to scale. And in geology we do this a lot too. All right? So that's that right there is the reason why um, we use vertical exaggeration when in geologic cross sections. Now I'm going to make other videos to explain this in more detail and to take to show you actual examples. But I just wanted to show you basically why we do this and to give you an idea of the scale of the of the earth compared to things we think are really big, like the Marinera Trench or Mount Everest or stuff like that. And to show you compare with the entire planet how insignificant these are. So um, that is it. And I hope you learned something.